Welcome to another edition of Bible Alive. I am very excited today. I have a great friend, Danny Vieira. Danny, I'm glad you're here with me today. Thank you, Dwight. We've known each other for at least 25 years, I think. Yeah. And um, our hair, we were talking about it before we got <laughs> on the air, that our hair is just a little grayer, and, uh, but at least we're even on that. But um, I want to just share with the audience what you do. You've got a ministry called sure. Modern Manna. Yeah. And what is, it's in the help, but what is that about? Well, Modern Manna, I call God's health message as he's trying to lead the people into the promised land today. Okay. And you know the story of the manna in the Bible. Yep. Well, the Lord is giving a plant-based diet today that I think is the healthiest, and we'll show that from science, we'll show it from the scriptures, and we'll show it from our own lives and our own stories. And Modern Man is just a very special ministry that combines health with the gospel. And I think those two must blend. Absolutely. You know, in, in especially in our witness today to people as Christians, because many times the body of Christ is very much into the forgiveness and the relationship we can have with Jesus and the eternal life. And that's totally right on. But they leave out the other part that Jesus did more healing than preaching. That's right, he did. And so Modern Man is really emphasizes that. And we have a lifestyle center called Bella Vida that people come to from all over the world with different ailments, different problems. They want to learn about health and nutrition yeah. and how to take better care of themselves. So the Lord's blessed us with a multifaceted ministry that incorporates a number of health, health modalities and programs and educational things like our health crusade we yes. do every year in Lodi. That draws, draws over 2,000 people. And, and people are just hungry about health. They really are. I mean, there's more, there's more disease. And then we've got the health care package that yeah. we've got an argument around the world. And some yeah. people want it one way and some people want it the other. Right. And yet we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. not that, but how we can make a difference ourselves with the health right. reform and how it, how it so much goes along with the scriptures and, and health. And, uh, yeah. and, and I just want to share that um, the very first time I met Danny, <laughs> okay. I'll never forget, Danny, we were, I was out in California to preach yeah. with some uh, other ministers out there, and we stayed at your house. And um, you and I, uh, for those that don't know, you were, you were, you used to be Catholic, right. is that correct? Right, right. And before that, you was, you said, I think you was telling me you used to be an atheist. Well, I was, or, I was Catholic for most of my life. I went okay. to 12 years of Catholic schools and all that, but when I went to UC Davis and graduated, I took a class called philosophy of religion and that's where I bought the atheist stuff. Okay, so okay. I was a Catholic turned atheist. Adventist. Turned Adventist. <laughs> but, uh, but you and I sat there and I think we stayed up and we were talking about this before we got on on the show here. But uh, we were intemperate that night, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. You know, the Lord stayed up. You, know, you were departing on the morrow. <laughs> that's it. But, you know, we were up to like three in the morning and yeah. we had such a kindred spirit and that was 25 that was years nice. ago. Because we, because we were so on fire for the Lord, we wanted the Lord to take all of our hearts, not a part of it. And I'll never forget that. And um, I'm just glad you're with us today. Thank you. And we're not probably going to just be able to do one show. Yeah. Uh, it looks like we're going to have a series Beautiful. of why health is so important. Yeah. So before we get started, I want you to open your Bibles to Genesis. Because we're yeah. going to start in the book of Genesis. Sure. And um, we'll do that right now. And then before <laughs> we start, I want to have a word of prayer. <clears throat> Genesis, it talks about, obviously... God's perfect plan mm -hmm. for Adam and Eve before sin. So we'll go right to the beginning of Genesis here, and um, we can go over that. But, you know, before we start, Danny, would you have, why don't Absolutely. you have prayer sure. for, for the audience you. here? Okay. Right. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you for your word. Amen. That gives us instruction not only in the way for eternal life and the way to heaven, but also the way that we can prevent disease and we can have a healthy, long life. So, Father, I pray for your Holy Spirit today that yes. you will enlighten Dwight and I and our audience Amen. that they will be more receptive to receive these beautiful health truths that you have contained in your word. Thank you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, our, our program obviously is called Bible Alive. Yeah. But this, to me, is a very important part of, about not just where the Bible is alive, but the Bible, you know, Jesus became the word. Yes. He lived it in the flesh. Right, and that's right. our job. Our job is to surrender all we have, that people won't see Danny or Dwight, but they'll say Jesus. Amen. And part of that being alive is Amen. health Absolutely. as a part of it. You know, let me <clears throat> share one scripture. Sure, go ahead. Just, you know, when you say a word, my mind flashes to a scripture. Okay. Now, you just said Bible alive. Yes. And I, and I want to give this as our key health text. Good, good. This is in Deuteronomy chapter 6, okay. verse 24. 
Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24. And here's what it says. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive Amen. as it is at this day. So God's in the preserving preventative health business. And I like to say, you know, we hear all this on health care reform. I just take one word out of there. Yeah. Let's take care out for a minute and call it health reform. And I think America is in dire needs of uh, education yes. on how to take care of your body. You know, I did a sermon a long time ago, Dwight, and <clears throat> I learned that Babylonian medicine dealt with diagnosis and cure, but Hebrew medicine dealt with prevention. And, and if I can say anything initially here, okay. is prevention is key. Prevention is key. It's much easier to prevent cancer than it is to try to heal cancer. Yep. So let's remember that. God wants to preserve us and, alive and prevention is key. That's right, and then, and of course, that goes along even with, I can remember my, my grandmother and saying that, a pound of prevention is worth a <laughs> yeah, an ounce of prevention an ounce, is worth a pound of cure. A pound of cure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's kind of like if you take care of the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. <laughs> I mean, they knew that. Right. They knew that that prevention was mightily important, and I I know that today. And I've you know, of course, we've had a fitness center for years, and we have people coming in that that I went to school with. You know, I'm in my 50s, and and I went to school with these people, and some right. of them I don't even notice. They look so changed. And they come in, and here's what they've told us in the fitness center. They changed said, in the wrong way? Changed in the, yeah, they're, they're overweight. They, yeah. they, starting with arthritis, they, their knuckles don't move as well. Right. And, and the kind of the world teaches them, you know, once you get in your 50s and you get ready to retire, you know, it's kind of like rocking chair days. Yeah. And that's not, doesn't no, have to be no, that way. Don't. And they'll tell me, Dwight, I don't care. What I have to do, if, if I have to oh, change good. my diet yeah. and it, if it tastes like cardboard, I don't care because I'm tired of living the That's way that it. I'm living. And so really, <clears throat> with what I've seen personally in health, people are tired of feeling the way they are. And yet, and yet the Bible has, I mean, it's, it's got a whole health message in it because it is important. Let me, let me share something else. Okay. We're right in Deuteronomy 6. Let's just go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. I, I love this. To me, this is, is a, a key chapter okay. in regards to God's health program. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, just verse 9, okay. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments yes. to a thousand generations. And then it says in 11, Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day. And then he goes on and says in verse 13, and here comes the health message. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He'll bless the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your land, your corn, your wine, your oil, the increase of your kind, your flocks. And here it, here it is. Verse 14 and 15 are the key. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. Wow. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. It's interesting that I read reports that Seventh-day Adventists live seven to 11 years longer than other people. Well, National Geographic did a did the article on that. I mean, that's National Geographic. It's right. not by Adventist standards, it's right. by world standards. This is world standards. <laughs> okay. And now the key, 15, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt upon you. Now, again, that's prevention. Yes. So God's saying, I keep my covenant with you. I'm, your, I'm God, you're my people. If you hearken unto me, and follow my health program, you will not get disease. That's yes. what it's saying to me. Yes. And I'll even heal you. Yes. So many times, and I've learned this in natural medicine, we cause our own diseases. Yes. And here's a simple illustration. A man goes to a doctor and says, hey doc, it hurts every time I do this. And the doctor <laughs> says, well don't do that. And I'd like to say that to our listening people today. You know, if you're smoking cigarettes, if you're drinking alcohol, if you're taking in a lot of caffeinated beverages, if you're eating sugar and refined foods, then expect disease. Yes. But if you will follow God's health program that we'll share over the course of this series, you'll find that you can avoid the diseases of Egypt. Yes. And you can be healthy, and God has a better way. And even though, even though there's people that can get mm -hmm. sick they've got you know maybe from birth and all these things yes. there can still be sickness but yes we're talking about that the majority of the people the that majority. are here in the mm -hmm. world could prevent much yes. of their diseases 
many of them, all of their diseases, if they would just heed to God's That's right. book. So let's go back into Genesis. Okay. Okay, let's go to Genesis. <clears throat> I love this because, uh, you know, I just want to share with, the, as I'm turning here, I, you know, I won't give, obviously, my testimony. It would take too long. We couldn't get, <laughs> we couldn't get what we really need to get done. But I, um, I grew up in, I started out in a Baptist church, became a Seventh-day Adventist, mm -hmm. then I left the church completely. I, I, I just was tired of playing church, and I've, I've said that I don't want to play church. When I came back to the Lord, I bought a Bible and said, and I actually held it up and said, Lord, I'm going to study this thing, even if it's the most boringest book I've really? ever read in my life. Because mm -hmm. even though there were stories about Daniel and the lion's den, and, you know, and there was Noah and Moses and certain mm -hmm. neat stories, I didn't understand so much of the Bible, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I wanted to, but it, I couldn't make it practical, so therefore that's why we had this program. But the thing of it is, I had somebody give me a health book, because, man, I was drinking 18 to 20 cups of coffee a day. Ooh. I was um, eating a lot of meat, yeah. a lot of cheese, um, probably two to three gallons of milk every single week. Um, of course, I was young. I was on the city basketball league, and I was on the city bowling league, and I, I just loved sports, so I was very, I was very outgoing and exercised a lot. And you needed all that protein. Right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know about the protein. I just, I liked milk, and I liked that stuff. Well, anyways, my diet really was atrocious. Yeah. And so somebody gave me a health book, and I started reading about that. And then what happened was when I gave my heart to the Lord, um, it's kind of funny. Actually, I was a vegetarian before I quit drinking alcohol. Really? <laughs> really? Because yeah. I thought... A I healthy liked... alcoholic, right? <laughs> a healthy al well, I thought if I quit everything else, I'd be okay. You know, what's, you know we, we've all said, you know, hey, you know, everyone's got to have a little vice, but that's yeah. not true. But when I got into the scriptures, Danny, and started realizing that God wanted to restore me, Dwight Hall, back into his image, and that part of that, it's the body, mind, and soul, spirit. Yeah. or the spirit, a physical, mental, and spiritual, that Amen. he wanted me to have a healthy body on this earth That's right. so that my mind would be clear and my spiritual aptitude would be clear. And yeah. I didn't know that. I thought, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have my body anyway in heaven if I go there. But he started training me and teaching me through the scriptures that it was important. And that's where I got back to Genesis. But that's my little so, story. So God has a <laughs> diet in the Bible? You tell me. Let's read it. Let's read it. So go ahead. Let's start in Genesis. <clears throat> Genesis chapter... Um, where is that? Chapter, chapter 1. Chapter 1. In the very, it's amazing in the very first chapter. So go ahead and read that, Danny, yeah. if you've got that. I like <laughs> the fact that, you know, in verse 26 it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, yes. after our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. He wasn't hunting them and fishing and eating them, right. eating them at this time. They were companions. Yes. And so he created man, verse 27, in the image of God, he created him. And then verse 29 is a key text when it comes to health in the Bible and God's original first diet plan for his creation. And who would know better what you should eat than the one who made you? That's right. So it says, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is a fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for food or for meat, it says in one version here. So God gave an original diet in Eden, and it was produce, it was plants, it was fruit. And what I like about this is we also learn there's no fire in heaven or, or in, the, in the earth when he was making right. it. There was no death, there was no fire, so there was no ovens. Yes. And they weren't cooking the food to death and whatnot. Yeah. But I think of live, living, fresh fruit. And I got 80 fruit trees on my property. Wow. And one day my daughter came to me in the morning and she says, so dad, what's for breakfast? And I said, well, let's look around the garden. And I said, there's plums and there's peaches and there's apricots and there's nectarines. And she said, I want that big red peach over there. And it was a strawberry freestone that's got the red bursting around the seed yeah. if you wow. open it. Yeah. And I pulled the limb down to her face and I said, she starts to pluck it. I said, no, just leave it there. And she took a big bite off the tree. I said, now that's live food. <laughs> so God's trying to preserve us alive. Yeah, right. He put us in a garden. We were created in his image and his likeness. And he gave us living food Amen. with the enzymes and the proanthocyanidins and the vitamins and the minerals and the trace elements and, and, and the, the pure water that's in them. They're life-sustaining nutrients in that food that's no cholesterol, high fiber, high energy, and who, who doesn't like a peach? And, and I was just thinking, I was just sharing that with me, that 
Well, I have to say I like peaches. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but he must have given that diet after Adam and Eve sinned, right? No, 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 no. So you're telling me that he had a diet before there was any sin. In other words, they had these glorified bodies when they were created yes. with no sin, right. and he still had an owner's manual for their health. That's right. I mean, a lot of people... That's very think, important. And you think about that, because people will say, well, it doesn't matter about my body today. I've got this sinful body, and I'm going to get rid of it. When I go to heaven, I'll have another one. Right. Yet God, in the very beginning, before there was sin... Right. The, one of the very first, I mean, it's Genesis chapter one mm -hmm. that he says, hey, I have a health plan right. for you so that your mind can stay clear right. and, your, and you, your spiritual aptitude can stay sharp right. because of my diet. Absolutely. You know, what's important too is to realize this. If you went to a zoo, they give a diet. They feed certain foods to certain animals. Okay, so the zebra, they don't bring ground round. Yeah. Right. Okay, they may give it to the lion, right. but they don't give it to the lamb. They don't give it to the, the, to zebra, to, to the, the zebra or to the horses yeah. or whatever. And so it doesn't say God put you in a slaughterhouse. Right. It doesn't say he put you in a meat packing plant. He yes. put you in a garden. And I think, you know, I said this to you yesterday. If you just look at your hand, and you put I, your, I like this. You, you like this? I like this. So go ahead. If you take your hand, God created me. I take my hand and I hold it out to you here and, and I see, and you can do this at home right now, every finger is a different length. But if you turn it, they're all the same. Perfectly designed for picking apples and oranges <laughs> and peaches and plums. So God designed us to eat produce. Yes. And, and you look at the anatomy, you look at the diet he gave in Eden, and like you said, this was before sin. That's right. Very important. Well, and I was thinking again as you were saying that, that, that he knew the very best plan when there was no sin. Right. Now, now I know that, you know, of course, studying and getting into just maybe a little bit deeper, but um, our bodies were never really made for animal products. Right. And, of course, we're not cutting anyone down. I'm, you know, on, on the air about animal products. What we're trying to do um, here is take, make the Bible come alive. We're not here to offend anybody. We're not here to cut anybody down. But, you know, the thing of it is, is the Bible is so plain, and God wants us to be, what, happy? Right. He wants us to be spiritually and mentally right. understanding. We're living in the last days. Right. I mean, even people that don't go to church say, Dwight, I, I mean, I know a lot of, I have a lot of friends that don't go to any church, and they will come up to me and they'll say, Dwight, I can tell you one thing. I don't know if I believe about all your religion, <laughs> but I can tell you something's wrong in this earth. We're, I mean, I've never seen it like this in my entire life. And God has yet had prepared for us even in these last days, how to be healthy, how to be well. And Amen. I think that's what we need to understand is that what we're, what we're doing here in these programs is taking some biblical principles and making practical, practical in your lives and our lives so that why? So that we can be more um, adapted and more ready for what's about to take place right. because if we're not physically ready, right. how will we be mentally or spiritually ready? You know, it's very important you said that because this isn't about judging people. Right. This isn't about condemning anybody because they eat an animal product or not. I think what this is about is trying to teach you God's plan and using science to support yes. that a plant-based diet is the healthiest for you today. In fact, I like to say it this way. This is in Isaiah chapter 65. Okay. <clears throat> it says in verse 17 of Isaiah 65, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. And in verse 21 it says, And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards, and they shall eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. And verse 25 says, And the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And now that's interesting because we find there's no more death in the earth made new. Animals are eating straw. There's no kill. Well, the lion. The lion. Is eating right straw. There, yeah. Which is a carnivore. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, I want to tell a little story. I was walking once with a Pentecostal minister friend of mine, and he's looking at me, and we're talking about health. And, he, and I said, I know what you're thinking. And he goes, what? And I said, you're thinking I'm trying to eat my way into heaven. <laughs> and he goes, well. And I put my arm around him, and I said, you know, brother, I'm just getting used to the diet I'm going to eat when I get there. <laughs> Amen. And Amen. he said, that's pretty good. Probably said touche. <laughs> he did. He did. But, but science supports it. Right. You know, look at Whole Foods markets today. Look at the produce out in front of those places. And then you see, you know, I have reports. And, and let me just, just share one little one, 
right now that I think is very important. And this is, this is very interesting. This is the American Cancer Society study links meat consumption to colon cancer. It said a study of nearly 150,000 Americans, the largest and most comprehensive to date, adds substantially to previous evidence linking highest consumption of red and processed meat to intestinal cancer. It is published in the January 12, 2005 issue of the Journal of the American Medical Association, the JAMA, yeah. and here's what it said, and I want you to guess. For red meat, prolonged high consumption was described as at least how many ounces daily for men and how many ounces daily for women would you think is going to contribute to greater amounts of colon cancer? What would you think? I don't know. I have to be honest, I'd just be guessing. Okay. <coughs> Three ounces. That's not very much. That's not a Two ounces for women. That means this much meat a yeah. day is going to increase your chance of colon cancer, according to the Journal of American Medical Association. And, and so, and, and we've, got a, we've only got a short time before mm -hmm. I would take a break, but why, you know, I think the audience, you know, they hear this, but I used to wonder, so why is that? Why is it that, <laughs> that meat would cause colon cancer? And I, I learned it because I, I started reading health books years ago. What mm -hmm. makes a difference? Why is it that meat would? Oh, you want me to answer that? Yeah. I think there's several reasons. First of all, I think there's no fiber. Okay. So therefore, your intestines were designed to take in food that had high fiber, which was like a broom for the intestines to okay. sweep it out. Clean it out. Okay, <coughs> so in other words, and I, I quoted this too, this was in the uh, European Journal of Cancer in 2004, that constipation increases the risk of colon cancer. Yes. Okay, so why is that? It's sitting there longer? Yes. Okay, it begins to putrefy and rot. The other thing is that they've linked saturated animal fat or saturated fats to an increase of colon cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer. Yes. I think another major reason, and I predicted this would happen on my 12 years, I did radio on a show called Healthline where people would call in with questions live. Dr. T. Colin Campbell, in the largest study ever on cancer and nutrition, I think it's the best book out called The China Study. He's, he's a PhD from Cornell. He has come out and said that the number one carcinogen in America is animal protein. So think about that. The protein content in animal food, he says, can turn cancer on like a light switch. So you got animal protein, wow. you got animal fat, and you have no fiber. So that's why it increases the chance of colorectal cancer, which is the second leading cause of death from cancer in America, according to the American Cancer Society. Okay, well, so you have think it. about that while we take a break. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome to the last study Bible you'll ever need. The new Remnant Study Bible has all the study aid serious Bible students have come to expect, like book introductions and outlines, an extensive concordance, over 40,000 cross-references, words of Christ in red, maps and charts. But with hundreds of other study Bibles on the market, the Remnant Study Bible stands head and shoulders above the rest. Not only because it's everything you've always needed in a study Bible, but because it takes studying the Bible to an entirely new level. From the hottest pen since the Bible prophets, the masterful commentary of E.G. White is now included alongside the New King James Bible text. As you read, these thought-provoking nuggets stand out from the main Bible text and offer spirit-filled insight to bring text to life in an inspiring and practical way. If we stopped right there, this Bible would be an invaluable resource to every home. But keep watching, we're just getting started. The Remnant Study Bible offers extensive study tools that not only help you understand, but also enable you to share these truths with others in a whole new and effective way. Feel confident as you share on topics such as the prophecies in Daniel chapters 2, 7, and 8, and the 2300-day prophecy. See the plan of salvation plainly revealed in the sanctuary and study the miracles and parables of Jesus in a deeper way than ever before. But perhaps one of the most powerful features of the Remnant Study Bible is the built-in Bible chain reference, a ready-to-go Bible study system that will allow you to effectively guide yourself or a student through major Bible teaching. 
Select the topic for study from the 20 included topics and turn to the first text. To help you find the text quickly, a chain link has been placed to the side of the text that expands the entire passage to be read. After you read and discuss the verse, a reference to the next text in the chain is found at the end of the passage. These subjects are made crystal clear as the Bible interprets itself. Remnant has teamed with Thomas Nelson Publishers, working together for over a year, making this the best study Bible ever offered at any price. After the team of over 30 Spirit-led contributors prayerfully and carefully selected the comments of E.G. White, we compiled the notes, images, tools, and resources, and these were all edited by the world-class editing team at Thomas Nelson. We have gone to great lengths to make this Bible one that you will be confident to use as you study and share. The Apostle Peter makes a bold call to all generations to be part of God's Special Forces team. We have done our very best to provide you with the most powerful sword of truth available. Now the decision is in your hands. Will you accept the challenge to become part of God's last day army? Equip yourself today. I'm glad that you stayed with us. You know, I don't know about you, but every time we do these Bible of Life programs, they just seem to go like that. And we're almost out of time, but um, you know, Danny, I was, just, I was just thinking that the one thing that, that we were talking about is that there's two things. People aren't exercising like they used to to pass the waste along. And the other thing of it is, meat takes a lot longer to digest mm -hmm. than others. Right, I think that people have, you know, some basic things today that they can start to practice in their own lives. But but eat more plant foods and get more exercise, and that's a great start. Well, we're going to have to do this again. Listen, until next time, make sure you join us again, but it's never too late to have a better way of life. So what? Don't put it off. By working together, 1.7 million copies of The Passion of Love were distributed around the country, resulting in an unprecedented partnership with Walmart that led to over 1,000 Bible studies. By working together, over 6 million copies of the Ten Commandments twice removed were shared around the world, resulting in more than 20 churches now keeping the Bible Sabbath. By working together, we have shipped almost a million Bibles to spiritually thirsty Christians in Africa, touching the lives of 20 million people for Christ. Working together is what allows Remnant Publications to spread truth-filled books around the world to hasten the Lord's coming. Will you join us in that mission? Will you help us reach the world for Jesus, one book at a time?